King Collector here and today I'm bringing you a video on the coldest day of the year. Today's video is about my 1986 Yamaha Phaser snowmobile. You may have seen this thing in the background in some of the boat series videos. Uh, I finally got it put together. Got brand new carbides on it, got the track on it, all that stuff. It's good to go, except for one thing. It runs for 15 seconds and then it dies. I have no idea why. It didn't do that when I first got it put together, but now it does. So we're going to have to figure out what exactly is going on with it. Which uh, that basically means ripping off the carbs, probably getting that stupid air box out of there, the silencer, I guess is what it's actually called. And uh, yeah, it, it, that'll be fun. I think it's the fuel pump is what I'm saying. So. Uh, this thing sat in a garage for 16 years before I got it. It did not run once during that time, so I'm thinking the diaphragm and the pump is just gone, gone with the wind. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get this thing back in the dollies, get it inside where it's probably about two degrees warmer, and uh, get going on it. All right, I finally got this 400-pound thing in the garage. And now we get to rip off those twin carbs there and uh, we'll take a look at the fuel line and see if it is uh, fuel lining. Oh great, get to find that now. That's another fun thing about snowmobiles is that stuff happens like all the time open the airbox so it's out of the way. Alright. I'm actually going to try to find that thing that just fell in there. Because uh, that might take a good half an hour to get out. I'm not even kidding either. All right, so there's a fuel line right there and a fuel line up there. So just keep an eye on those for me and let me know if they uh, do the fuel line thing. All right, make sure the kill switch is off so there's no sparks flying around with all this fuel everywhere. That wouldn't be fun. All right. All right. Well, clearly that's fine. So I'm a little confused right now because, well, I cleaned the cards when I first got it. That was literally the first thing I did. So I'm pretty uh, confused right now. I mean, they're not spotless. They were when I put them in, but you know, two strokes tend to do stuff like this. I've seen much worse looking carbs run just fine. So like I say, I'm a little confused right now, but I guess we'll just clean them again. We'll look at the spark plugs. Those were also brand new when I put them in there. And uh, we'll see what those look like. And I guess we'll just clean everything up and see if we can get it to run properly. Production of the phaser began in 1984. All phasers were equipped with a 485cc air-cooled twin-cylinder engine producing a mediocre by today's standards of 56 horsepower. However, this is actually a detuned rating as Yamaha had installed a highly restrictive exhaust canister to satisfy the snow cross regulations of the time. Production continued until 1989 when they upgraded it to the Phaser 2. Power output was increased to 63 horsepower and new color schemes were available along with a special Canadian color scheme. With a high flow performance exhaust and proper jetting, it is very easy to get upwards of 80 horsepower out of this little engine. This is actually my second phaser. My first one was a first year model, 1984, with electric start and hand grip warmers, which I uh, won't lie to you, I'm kind of missing those uh, amenities. And uh, cosmetically, it was better, but mechanically, it was much worse than this one is. This one's a lot more mechanically sound, but cosmetically much worse than my 84 was. 
All right, uh, I got everything put back together. Just did it off camera because it took forever and I had to find that little spring and needle. I believe everything is connected. Got the idle set and I'm going to actually leave it for a second because there's a lot of gas down in the belly pan there. And I'd rather not have it backfire and uh, engulf itself in flames. So I will uh, get back to it in probably about 15 minutes and we'll see if uh, whatever I did fixed the issue. All right, I think uh, the fuel that was in the bottom is mostly dried out. So I guess we'll see if this thing fires up and if it actually responds to some uh, throttle input. So that's on. I believe key is on. Yep. It's going to take a few pulls because we have to fill out the bowls, but it shouldn't take too much. All right. Pick up there so I don't accidentally hit the tripod and send you guys flying towards the ground. Let's see what happens. Well, as you can see, it was running, so we're a step in the right direction. But as you saw, it was still not really 100% there. It, it would take it a minute to really get going. And uh, it could just need to run, but who knows, really. Might just run a little bit more. I wasn't hearing the lean pop anymore, so that's a bonus. I think uh, whatever I did helped. So... Maybe we'll just run it for a little bit and see what it does. Uh, and as you saw with the headlight, this is a daytime only sled because there's something wrong with the electricals in it. I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, I might pull the engine this summer and uh, replace the lightning coil. I've already replaced the voltage regulator and I've tried cleaning up the grounds and it's still doing that weird candlelight thing. So... With all that being said, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I may post a riding video here and there. I don't know, but uh, we'll see what happens. I have no idea how long the snow is going to stay. Uh, our last snow only stayed for about a week, and I'm going to guess this will probably be about the same. So, man, it is so fun living in Michigan, let me tell you. It's about six degrees right now, so I'm going to get inside, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.